This is the Catalyst 9300 series switch from Cisco, and it could quite possibly be the best user access layer switch ever produced by any manufacturer. I'm gonna show you guys around the switch today, front to back. We're gonna go over some of the software features that this thing has in it. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna talk about why I think this is or is not the best user access layer switch ever produced by any manufacturer. So before we get into it, a couple of things to note about this switch. It does come in a few different flavors here. So you can get this in 24 port, you can get it in 48 port. You can get this with data only, meaning no power over ethernet on it, or you can get it with PoE. And there's two ways you can get this with PoE. There's either PoE plus, which is 30 watts of port, or you get this with UPoE on it, which gives you more power to power things like LED lighting inside your organization. Yes, you can actually power your overhead lights with the new catalyst switches that Cisco produced here. Um, besides the UPoE here, I have actually the top of the line model switch, and this one comes with UPoE and MGIG. That's multi-gigabit ethernet. So we can start powering devices now that require more than a gigabit per second, like all the new 802.11ac Wave 2 access points that could do two gig per second with this switch here, not changing out any of my cabling. I can run two gig per second, two and a half gigabit per second, even five gig per second on regular Cat5e cabling. So guys, I'm gonna show you around this switch here, and if you guys are new to my channel, please remember to subscribe, and if you have any questions, post them in the video description below, and I will get back to you. Okay, let's start with the front of the switch, and then I'll turn it over in a second here. And I'm gonna start off, guys, showing you the first 36 ports, and that'll make a little more sense in a second here. Uh, once I get down to the ports and everything. But let's start at the top left of the switch. And you may or may not uh, even see this button when you take it out of the box. And I didn't even I didn't even notice until I started playing around with the CLI command and I wanted to turn this feature on. But in the top left is what we're calling a blue beacon light. And if this thing's stacked in uh, a rack somewhere and you've got eight or nine of these things and someone needs to come in and do maintenance for it, maybe change a fan or, or do something else with the switch, you could actually light up the little beacon light here lights up pretty bright blue so someone walking in knows exactly which switch needs the maintenance and then when they're done this light actually depresses and you could press it in and that's how you turn the light off or you could even turn it on like that if you wanted to you could press it maybe i'll do another video showing how that how that works it's kind of cool um, but we'll, we'll save that for another time Next to that here is some status lights. So just making sure the switch is powered on and, and working properly. You got your typical Cisco status lights right there. Next to that is a USB console port. So instead of having to use the old school uh, console cable to serial to USB and worrying about the drivers and you know that thing was always fun, now you can actually USB directly into, into the switch right from here. Next to that is a USB port for um, media. So if let's say you're trying to pull a file off of the switch or you need to put something onto the switch here, you could actually plug a little thumb drive right in there, just making things a little bit easier if, if you're there in person and need to, need to do something quick. Now onto the actual ports below here, and I'm gonna show you guys again the first 36 because the first 36 ports, and remember I have the MGIG version of this, are MGIG capable, and they could do up to 2.5 gigabits per second. And if you look real closely here, you can see that Cisco wrote in the switch 2.5 G. Now if I pan over here and I show you the second half of the switch, you could take a look at ports 37 through 48. Also multi-gigabit Ethernet capable, but these actually can go up to 10 gigabit per second. And, you know, this was actually one of the things I found interesting to hear. So instead of writing 10G, like they wrote 2.5G over here, they decided to use TE. And when I first looked at, looked at this, I'm like, what the heck is TE? I, I haven't seen that yet. Then I started getting into the switch and realized that TE is the interface name when you're in the CLI. So if you're trying to configure the interface, uh, TE stands for 10 gigabit Ethernet. So I don't know what happened at Cisco. I don't know why they didn't, they weren't consistent through this thing. I figure they would have either used 10G here or, you know, if they wanted to use the CLI 
commands here. Maybe they should have put TW. That's what uh, 2 gigabit Ethernet is in CLI. Um, but anyways, I th thought that was kind of a funny little quirk. I don't know why they weren't consistent on the, on the labeling there. Next up is the modules that you could plug into this thing here. So I have in here right now an eight port uh, network module. And again, this comes in a, a bunch of different flavors here, guys. You could get this thing with, with uh, one gig if, on it if you wanted. You can get it with 10 gig. You could get um, 25 gigabit per second. You could even get 40 gigabit uplink modules on this thing. The one cool thing about this is that if you had some old 3850 uplink modules laying around, there are a bunch that are compatible with this. Um, I wouldn't go out and buy any new 3850 modules and plug them in here because the 9300 ones are actually a little bit um, a little bit cheaper than the 3850s. But if you had one that was laying around and you wanted to use it, you could probably slide it right in and it would work for you. Okay, so we turn the switch around here so you guys can see it. Now again, I'll start with the top left and we'll work our way we'll work our way down here. So the first thing that you'll see on the back of this thing here is a little plate. Uh, with a screwdriver picture on here showing you how to get this plate off and when you take this off what you find in the back there and it might be kind of hard to see on the video but there's a USB port in in the back there and what Cisco is doing with this is that we're making a solid state drive that you could plug in here it's 120 gig solid state drive you push it in so you might be thinking why is Cisco putting 128 120 gigs of storage on the switch and the answer to that is because not only does the switch have storage it also has an x86 processor inside of it and memory so if i've got storage a processor and memory i can do some pretty cool stuff i can run applications on this switch i could run something like perf sonar if i wanted to or maybe splunk i can get data off this switch and, and send it somewhere so Really cool feature. I'm glad Cisco put that in there. All the Catalyst 9000 series switches have some sort of flavor of that. But underneath it here, I've got uh, your traditional console cable. I don't, console cable port. I don't think Cisco is ever going to get rid of this thing. They've had it on every device I've ever touched. Um, next to that is a gigabit out of band management port, if you guys need that for anything. And next to that is the fans. And these things are really easy to change you squeeze the sides and you pull out on them and then you just slide them back in it takes two seconds next to the fans or in the middle of the fans is your data stack stack plane here so it's a 480 gigabit per second stack and the one thing i should mention with this is if you do have 3850s they're not compatible so you cannot stack a 9300 with a 3850 um, just like all previous generations, we, can, we couldn't stack a 3750 with a 3850. So I want to make sure you guys are aware that you, that you can't do that as well because the stack cables are the same. So you might be thinking, well, the cables look the same. I should be able to stack these things together. And the answer is you can't. Uh, but it is a 480 gigabit, gigabit per second backplane here. So you've got two uh, stack-wise ports right there for the 480 gigabit backplane. And you just create a loop on those on those ports for that to work. And I'll pan over a little bit here and show you the power supplies. And just like we've got the data stack plane, there's also a stack here for power. So now I can do stack power. So instead of instead of doing um, a outbound redundant power supply for these things, or putting a redundant power supply in every single switch. Now I could actually just stack my power on these switches and I could accomplish the same thing via that. A couple things to note with that, um, you can only stack four of these together. So you could have a, a, a data stack plane of up to nine, but with these you can only have a, a power stack plane up to four. And if you have over four in a data stack, that's okay. You just need to make two separate stacks. So you just cable it as two separate entities instead of instead of one large stack. Not a problem. Then if I move over to the power supplies here, we can see it's got dual power supplies, this switch here. These things, again, really easy. In and out. Two seconds to change them if you ever need to. And since we're talking about power, I'll talk about a couple features that this switch has when it comes to power. 
So we've got something called Perpetual PoE and Fast PoE on these switches now. And Perpetual PoE is actually really cool where if I don't want to lose power when the switch is rebooting, I can turn that feature on and all my devices stay up and the switch can reboot, no problem. Fast PoE, another really great feature where as soon as I plug the switch in, a couple seconds later, the devices start to get power. So we don't wait till the switch fully boots to see that the device is there and start giving it power. We can give that, that device power right away. Where that's gonna be useful, I see that being very useful once we start powering more buildings with this type of technology. I mentioned the UPOE um, in the beginning here. You know, if I'm powering my lights and I need to reload a switch, I really don't want my lights to shut off because I reloaded the switch. Or if we do lose power, I want those lights to turn on as quickly as possible. I don't wanna have to wait for the, for the switch to fully reboot before I, before I get power back to my lights. So some really cool features. And again, maybe that's one of the videos that I'll, that I'll show you guys here in a little bit. Um, but that's the back of the switch. So I showed you guys the front of the switch. I showed you guys the back of the switch, but what else does this thing have in it? What else makes this the best user access layer switch ever produced? Well, there's a couple more things that I haven't talked about yet. For one, Cisco actually embedded an RFID chip in the front panel here somewhere. And that's so you guys could take inventory really easy. You could walk into a wiring closet with a little handheld scanner and find out, hey, I've got 29,000 series switches in here um, from Cisco. Just makes your job a little bit, a little bit easier. Besides that, this box, just like the 3850, has full-blown flexible net flow and it's hardware based. So you could turn on net flow on all ports without the switch taking a hit. And along with NetFlow, we finally put NBAR2 inside of this guy here. So that's your network-based application recognition. And we could recognize, you know, 1,000 plus different applications going through this switch and send it out via NetFlow to some collector somewhere. So I could take a look at who's using Skype traffic on here, uh, who's doing YouTube videos, who's using SIFS file sharing, how much voice over IP traffic I have going through this box. You know, with the NBAR2 capability in the switch, I can now see that. And going a step beyond that, they also put ETA or encrypted traffic analytics inside of this switch. This is probably the single feature that has most of my customers excited about this switch is that without decrypting any of the traffic, we can actually look at that information that's being passed through the switch, even though it's encrypted, and tell you guys if it's malicious. We're the only ones in the market that I'm aware of that's, that's doing anything like this today, and you can do that right on the 9300 series switch. Uh, besides the ETA going down the security path here too, we do have MacSec encryption built into this thing. So what that allows you to do is if I have uh, a 9300 series switch here, 9300 series switch here, or maybe 9500 series switch that these are going back to, or maybe even a Nexus switch. I can encrypt the traffic as it leaves the switch and goes to the next switch. So I can encrypt between hops on the switches here. And guys, the last feature here, and this is a big one, and I haven't even talked about this yet, and this is really what launched this entire platform is that this switch is capable of SD access or software defined access. I'm not gonna go into the whole SD access pitch or intent based networking or anything like that. Um, we could save that for another video or I'm sure there's a ton of videos on YouTube already about that. But this switch is fully capable of, of SD access and making your lives a heck of a lot easier by using it. So we talked a lot about this switch today. I showed you guys as many features as I've played with and I've tested and I've read about um, on this thing. And you know, it was hard for me not to say that this thing was the best switch out there. I've never seen anything like this. I've played around with 2960s, 3750s, 3850s, 3650s, and even older switches. And this is the first time I think Cisco actually put every feature I could ever possibly want in a user access layer switch in one box. So with that, I'm going to go on a limb here and I'm going to say, yes, this is the best user access layer switch ever produced by any manufacturer. And if anyone wants to challenge me on that statement, I'd love to have that discussion. Just post it in the video uh, description below and, and we could chat about that. So with that, guys, 
Um, you know, thank you for watching. And again, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. If you have an idea for a video or you want something that, that you want me to cover, um, just let me know and I'll, and I'll try to get to it. Thanks a lot.